Let's now jump into the different types of research we have. And in this case, I'm going to go very quickly. Your research is going to be one of these types. Which type? I don't know. But anyway, one of these types. The first type is going to be empirical. Now empirical is probably the type you're doing. If you're a college student, if you're a PhD student, a master degree student, you're probably doing empirical work. This means that you're doing some kind of original research. You're actually looking at source material. You're doing some kind of test, a survey. You're doing some kind of experimentation in a lab. If you do an empirical study, then the parts of your thesis or the parts of your research paper would include things like an introduction, a methodology section, a results section, and a discussion session. So I think it's really important that we just take some time to look at this. These are your main sections right here. So you're going to have introduction, methodology, results, and discussion. So we're talking about four main sections. Now it's possible to add more subsections. It's even possible to break these sections into more sections. For example, discussion could include some other ideas like future or weaknesses. Introduction could include your literature review. It most certainly does, but is that a separate section? Well, maybe, maybe not. Depends on your school, depends on your requirements, it depends on what you need to graduate. But we can say for sure empirical studies have these main parts. Very quickly then, let's go over them again. And I want you to keep this in mind, very important. Introduction. Your introduction is going to include your literature review. It tells where did the problem come from, what's the research that came before this problem, what leads up to it. Method, methodology. This is going to tell how did you execute your research. What are the methods you use for this? And then results, what is the outcome? What is the actual data that comes out? And then discussion. What do the results mean? What is the strength of the results? What's the weaknesses of the result? And what do these results mean to the future? All of that can go inside of discussion. Literature review research. A literature review research is a little bit different. Literature review focuses on collecting information that's already been published. Nothing new. It's going to be totally focused on existing. It's basically going to say what's happened up until now. This can include things like defining and clarifying what is the issue, what is the problem. It also can include summarizing. So all of these research papers, all of these books that have been published before, maybe videos that were made, maybe documentary movies that were made, all of these things are maybe tens or hundreds or, or more. You can pull them all together to come up with some main ideas so that I, the reader who's interested in this topic, do not have to go search for all of those. You identify relationships, contradiction, gaps, and inconsistencies in the literature. And basically you're trying to come up with a kind of system. So that's this idea of some kind of relation among all of this information. Kind of like, okay, I've got all this information, what does it mean? 50 articles, uh, 90 articles, and 25 books, what do they mean? It may not mean just one thing, it may mean two or three things, or it may go into different categories, but that's the goal of a literature review research uh, paper or thesis. Lastly, you'll suggest steps in the future that can be done to help clarify the area or help the literature move forward to make more of a contribution. Usually for students, you would not be doing a literature review research. Literature review is part of your research, one part of your research, your introduction, is literature review. But your whole research literature review, usually not. Now if you're in the area like history or other humanities, it's more likely. But usually this would be people who are already full-time researchers, basically, because it's not a very uh, applied in that way. Okay, theoretical articles. Now theoretical articles are going to be a bit tougher. Theoretical articles are going to be looking at the existing research and trying to really advance the theory, come up with some theory improvement or new theory. So these would often be related to mathematics, uh, physics, these kinds of more theory-driven fields. They review theory, they expand on it, they refine it, and they analyze existing theory. Usually students would not be doing theory, uh, theory research. 
although it's possible, like I say, if you're in mathematics or you're in um, physics, I guess you, you could be doing that. Not quite my area. Methodology articles. Methodology articles are kind of interesting. And again, this would probably not be students, so just very quickly, methodology articles focus on methodology. That means that they focus on very specific ideas, maybe statistical testing, maybe mathematical, maybe uh, chemistry, maybe physics, and that is they're actually trying to advance the methodology, the way you execute some research. So for methodology, they'll be very technical, be very advanced, not something I think most business students would be doing. Now case studies is something that it, it is very possible students will be doing and is actually very common among students like EMBA, that is executive MBA, night school students, students who are working. Case studies are very common in business, especially for people who have working experience because they can use their working experience as the case. In any case, case studies can be common across many fields, anthropology, uh, even other areas related to science, uh, even medical, you can use case studies very commonly for research. So what is involved in a case study research? In case studies, we usually study groups of participants, although they could be individuals, but most, uh, more likely it's going to be a group of people. So case studies report that information and uh, let the reader understand the context. Case studies often illustrate some kind of problem. So they may be studying a business, a family business that's having some kind of difficulty or success and what's involved in that. Very often the case study is focused on some kind of issue. So in business school, I think we're very familiar with this. Maybe if you're in the science area, you don't touch case studies that much. But suffice to say that case studies is really a more general way, an inductive kind of study, a more qualitative study. That is, you describe the situation. It's not going to be hyper-scientific or mathematical in that sense. Another kind of uh, research you can do is called meta-analysis. And again, this would not be students. Usually these would be professional researchers who do this stuff all the time. And a meta-analysis is kind of interesting. It's very common in the medical area and in other sciences, such as physics and chemistry, although we do have it also in business. And the way a meta-analysis or a review of articles, or sometimes a review of reviews, the way these work is you first have a problem that you're going to investigate, and then you look at the previous research, and specifically as kind of research. So for example, Maybe we're going to do a meta-study on dieting. So I want to understand the previous research on dieting. Now I have to be more specific. So maybe I want to look at dieting by using vitamin D. Okay. So I'm going to look at all the studies I can find that studied vitamin D. And those studies themselves should be some kind of um, collect data collection that is, those studies themselves have real data. I combine that data into my paper and I call it a meta-analysis. So if one paper has a t-test and that t-test has uh, variable A is higher and it's higher by one standard deviation and then another study has variable A and it's lower by one standard deviation, I can combine these together by using some mathematical techniques and using some scores that equalize everything and I come up with a bigger study. So I take smaller studies and make a bigger study. I guess that's a good way to say it. So you identify relationships or contradictions or inconsistencies in the literature and we often see this in medical research where a meta-analysis will come out and the news will say uh, for the last pen, 10 years everyone has been saying you should be take more take more vitamin D but this new study is a meta-analysis shows that vitamin D is not effective. How do they know that? Because they took many smaller studies added them together. And then usually a meta-study will give you some kind of idea what do we need to do to move forward in the future. Okay, so those are the different kinds of research you can do. I think that for most students, uh, you're going to be focused on collecting data. So you're going to be doing a research that maybe does a survey or maybe is in the lab and does some testing or developing of something. So this kind of research is suitable for 
uh, students, but also professionals do it. The other kinds of research, like the meta-analysis and the theoretical development, these kinds of things, theory, those are really heavy things that probably students won't be doing, so you don't need to worry about it.